Hello, my name is Claude Taylor, and for those of you that know me, welcome back. And those who do not, I hope you enjoy the video. And if you like it, give me a thumbs up and become a subscriber. Thank you. Okay, this is what we're going to cover in this video. Uh, we're in, uh, this is a church, and we're in the men's restroom, of course, because what we're going to do is we're going to work on the urinals. But they have two urinals, and both the urinals are starting to leak, corrode, as you can see here in the video. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to remove these P-traps and the spuds, and we're going to replace it. Now, most urinals today are made with intricate uh, P-traps, meaning that the P-trap is built inside the fixture itself. So it's not exposed and you don't have access to it. But this is an older building. And this is back when they had a lot of uh, P-traps that, that were exposed. Um, me personally, I kind of like these if I was a drain tech someone that clean drain lines because of the access is so easy opposed to the uh, ones with the uh, p-traps built in this is the uh, spud this is an inch and a half spud and this is the new inch and a half spud that we're gonna put in here and these spuds are no different than the ones that you use on it We have the flush tube, and that was just the uh, scutcheon, which is, which they also called uh, part of the trim. And this is the spud. Sometimes these spuds, uh, toilet spuds, been on here so long that uh, they start to uh, you actually you just sometimes just wiggle them right off. And this is an inch and a half spud, by the way inch and a half tallest bud and right now I'm using my um, channel lock pliers it makes it a little easier to uh, remove that nut and like I said this has been on here a while so in a lot of cases you may not run into this especially if you're living in areas uh, where the water is not so hard that's the spud the washer Here's the new spud, the washer. Once you tighten it down, you can see that the uh, washer will squish up against it and seal. Okay, now we're here back at the urinal. And of course, this is our new inch and a half spud. And by the way, when you're uh, installing spuds on a toilet or a urinal plumbing fixture, best thing to do first before you put the spud in place is to make sure that the uh, surface is very dry uh, because if you have any kind of wetness uh, it will tend to spin on you and it will make it really hard to uh, install that uh, spud and of course we're pulling the uh, old one out and okay we're going to uh, we're going to take this because that piece uh, not this piece here but you can see the inside of the wall where they have a uh, PVC piping and we're going to take the other piece the new piece and we're going to cut it down just a little bit because the uh, depth of the inside of that uh, sanitary T is not very not very deep so we don't want to, we want to make sure that we don't cover the uh, 
outlet end of the T and cause any uh, stoppage. One thing about this, um, these urinals, I was very lucky that the uh, waste system has been changed. Although they kept the uh, old urinals, uh, which I don't blame them. There's still some good urinals and working fine. <coughs> they did have someone come in and uh, replace the uh, drains. Me, it wasn't me myself. Um, but prior to this, knowing the age of this building, I'm sure that it was cast iron or some type of lead. Uh, which would have been an issue um, at this, you know, this stage of the game of uh, replacing the urinal. So I looked out, and they had that all replaced. So all I have to do is come here and replace the uh, P-trap. And this is the protective covering, covering for the uh, discussion, and also known as the trim, the decorative piece to cover and hide this uh, hole, which is actually <laughs> probably a little bigger than these be, but hey. And what I am trying to do is to avoid making that hole any bigger and destroying that wall. Uh, leaving it looking ugly I don't think the customers gonna appreciate that but I did let them know that it's a possibility that uh, I may have to go into the wall but if I can save it I'm gonna save it and this is just a random piece uh, that I'm using to kind of line up the uh, trap and the actual piece that I'm going to uh, cut to put in there is going to be it's going to be a, uh, a little longer than the other piece that I had up there and that piece right there that we put in there is no more than just a inch and a half piece of tubing brass tubing Okay. Now that I've got everything tightened up, now it's time to uh, test the urinal out. And I'm removing the discussion to make sure that the uh, compression nut in the wall is not leaking. 
because uh, again remember I said uh, we don't want to have to go into the wall but the only way we would be able to tighten that nut is to go into the wall so what I did is squeeze the tubing back in here and we lucked out and it's not leaking it's in there tight enough so we don't have to uh, destroy the wall and the next video uh, it's gonna be another urinal but this urinal is gonna be a little harder to uh, get the spud out all right here's the other urinal and this spud doesn't look too good the piping doesn't look too good um, this is the one I had difficulty with and you'll see what I did to make it not so difficult And as you can see on the back wall, you see that the uh, compression nut is actually protruding from the wall. So this one, we have a little easier access to the uh, drain spud. So I mean the uh, drain nut. So that helps out a lot. Um, so we can really ensure that we got this tight enough. And again, you know, same thing with the other one. Uh, the piping, the PVC piping, has been uh, installed in the wall and replaced. Uh, from the uh, being cast iron or lead or whatever it was back at the time because this is an older building yeah that was uh, waiting to go And here we go for an adventure on removing this spud. It's really kind of frozen on here. And yep, we could turn it, but the whole spud turned. And that's not what we want. This is a little uh, uh, side angle um, grinder that I keep with me for occasions like this. Uh, the blade is a diamond blade and it's a very good blade to last a long time. As a matter of fact, I probably had this one for about, about eight years already and I'm still cutting metal and cast iron and everything else with it. So what we're doing here is we're just cutting a little slit down the middle so that we can split the uh, brass nut that's stuck in place. And once we split that, it, it'll make it a little easier to try to pry things apart and get it out of here. And you do have to have a lot of patience when working on toilets and urinals because of the porcelain it can easily crack. So you just want to work real careful with this.
All right, let's um, let's cut another slit in here. Now this should make it a little easier. Um, of course, getting the uh, the nut off there is not it's it's not gonna put too much of a fight up this time. <clears throat> but we are gonna have issues with that uh, rubber gasket that's up in there. It's up in there. It's been up in there a long time, so we're gonna have to work work that loose too to get the spud out. It's not as much as uh, that the uh, spud's been up there a long time. The biggest issue is the uh, all of the corrosion and all of the buildup from you know use and everything dripping on it, the calcium buildup that's making it really hard to uh, get this spud off <coughs> because it's basically with the calcium just turned into uh, basically one piece. And again, I am trying to stay out the way of the camera, so uh, putting my best effort sometimes have to be put on hold, and I have to take my time with the camera in the way and making sure I don't uh, crack this uh, ceramic porcelain. Now we've got the nut off. Now we have to fight a little bit with this gasket and get it off. Finally. Okay, now let's clean that surface up a little bit and dry it up and then we can put the new spud on here. This is what the, uh, after the spud's been removed, what we see when we look up in the urinal and what we look down in the urinal. We have the flush tube, and that was just the uh, scutcheon, which is which they also call uh, part of the trim. And this is the spud. Sometimes these spuds, uh, toilet spuds, been on here so long that uh, they start to uh, 
actually just sometimes just wiggle them right off. And this is an inch and a half spud, by the way. Inch and a half tallest spud. And right now I'm using my um, channel lock pliers. It makes it a little easier to uh, remove that nut. And like I said, this has been on here a while, so... In a lot of cases you may not run into this, especially if you're living in areas uh, where the water is not so hard. That's the spud, the washer. Here's the new spud, the washer. Once you tighten it down, you can see that the uh, washer will squish up against it and seal. And now let's get back to our urinal. Here we are at the urinal again. And you've just seen the uh, commercial toilet with the inch and a half spud. And again, the same thing here. One's from the top and one goes in at the bottom. And again, when before you put the spud in place and start cranking down on it, make sure that the uh, porcelain is nice and dry so that the uh, spud doesn't spin and turn on you. Nah, we're not going to put that piece back. What we're going to do, I was going to use that piece as the measurement and cut the new one the exact same size. So we take our tubing cutters and we're going to cut the piece out make it to fit
And you notice I keep uh, turning the uh, tubing tool around and around and around, but each time that I turn it, uh, I crank down on the wheel and it squeezes on the pipe. And you can see the indentations right there that we're just about ready to cut through it. And again, again, remember this is all inch and a half tubing. This is just a piece of inch and a half tubing. Um, more than most likely, this piece here came off the other end of this J bend that I used when I cut it down the size to fit. So rather than waste it, we put it on this end. And one thing about the uh, spuds, now that uh, I'm thinking about it, uh, you this is uh, usually a spud. You just really don't go to places like Home Depot and uh, pick one up. Um, usually, you're going to have to go to a plumbing supply house. Although Ace Hardware and True Value, uh, I have ran into stores like those that have had uh, that do carry spuds but uh, more than most likely at the uh, Home Depot Lowe's or anything like that you're really not gonna find this spud I'm not saying it's pos not possible but uh, in most cases I've never found them in the uh, Home Depot or Lowe's And you can hear me flushing it. I'm constantly testing to make sure there's no leaks before we wrap up and leave out of here. Once again, and I'm Claude Taylor. Thank you for watching. And if you like, subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Thank you.